thank you guys for coming out today. Um, we obviously just want to try to inform you guys more on nutrition and then obviously give you a chance to try out the new Power Bowls. Um, most of you know who I am, but in case you don't, I'm Taylor Hutchinson. Um, I own the gym uptown. I've been a personal trainer for eight years um, and I've owned the gym for about six and a half years. So um, we just want to try to you know, educate you guys a little bit more on nutrition. So hopefully you guys enjoy this and get some knowledge out of it. Yep. Um, Bethany? Uh, yeah, so I'm Bethany Grunovich. I've been working at the gym for over three years now as personal trainer, nutrition coach. Um, I've personally been working on myself for eight years and then started getting into nutrition through college and then which led me back here through COVID times, started working at the gym, fell in love with working with people, having this make my passion to help people become healthier, fitter versions of themselves, um, and really just focusing on like a balanced lifestyle instead of just like trying to figure out the weeds of like what to do, what not to do. And it's, it's really hard when you can see other people that just don't, they don't have that foundation that a lot of people need in their healthy lifestyle. So trying to bring that to the community, get that foundation for everybody. Yeah, so with that being said, like our mission is basically just to try to make a difference in the community. Um, obviously, like bringing the Power Bowls here was a huge step. Um, obviously, offering a lot of different services. So if you haven't been in the gym, um, we offer 24-7 access to the gym and weight room. We do classes. We do personal, trainer, uh, personal training. And then we also do the nutrition coaching, um, like our six-week challenges, 63-day transformations, things like that. So basically, no matter what goal you have, we can try to help you achieve those goals. So that's our mission. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started with the presentation. So, Yeah, so you guys get a pop quiz. <laughs> you all have a little sheet that has notes on it. And so what I want you to do is on your notes section, please write down or try to recall either what you ate yesterday for dinner or what you've had today so far. And no right or wrong answers, it's just what it is. Just write down either what you had for breakfast or maybe what you had for dinner last night. <laughs> we went out. It's Friday night, this is a rough night too to recall. Yeah, well that's okay. To write down. They're already telling each other, so. <laughs> Mom had pizza. Huh? <laughs> Mom had pizza at any point. Oh, really? <laughs> See. Okay, <laughs> so now we're going to turn to your neighbor, share your answers. Just kidding. No, you don't have to do that. Um, you don't have to share what you have. But what I want you to do is look down at your sheet of paper and notice what you wrote down first. Was it like the protein in the meal? Was it the carbohydrate? Was it vegetable? Was it something else that you wrote down first? Who wrote down vegetables first? Ooh, one. I was going to say, usually <laughs> vegetables come in last. Maybe nobody at all. How about protein? Anybody put protein down first? Right. Okay. Carbohydrates? Yeah? All right. Well, at least everybody's prioritizing their protein, but poor veggies get <laughs> left out most of the time. All right. So um, the big thing is, is what you do every day matters a lot more than what you do once in a while. So a lot of people, you know, they have these aspirations, especially in the new year, like, okay, I'm going to make all these resolutions and try to eat better and they go from zero to a hundred really fast and that just kind of sets you up for failure. So what we would want to encourage is just trying to do a little bit every single day for the whole entire year rather than trying to do as much as you can um, and then kind of leading to that point to where it's like, okay, I can't do this anymore. This is too tough. We want to try to make things simpler and so that you can actually sustain it you know, for years to come. So just making things a little bit easier, focusing on what you can do every single day rather than just what you can do a couple times throughout the year. Yeah. Okay? And a good analogy for this is everybody here went to school. So if you got failed test after test and all of a sudden you're like, oh, you know what? I'm going to study super hard and I'm going to get 100% on this next test. But your overall grade really doesn't change much from that one test. Right. 
But if you just were more consistent with maybe studying a little bit, you'd get 70, 80% on all the tests. You're going to end up better at the end of the class overall versus just focusing on one test and doing really, really well. Wyatt's scared because he hasn't been to school yet. <laughs> yeah, so we want to think more of eating on a spectrum. So it's not like, okay, I'm eating super healthy or unhealthy. It's more like a scale of 1 to 10, or we can use kind of these colored smiley faces. So most people, they're either on a red or green, and they're not really in the middle. We would rather see people kind of right in the middle in the yellow or maybe this kind of light green guy. So probably like 60 to 80% of the time, we're eating healthy whole foods um, with sprinkling in some stuff that you like to enjoy. Like today, you know, you're gonna have a healthy meal, but you might have a couple drinks, that's totally fine. Or maybe you get dessert as well. You know, we'd rather have people do that and then starting Monday or the next day, they're getting right back on track instead of kind of going off the rails, either super clean or super unhealthy. So hopefully that makes sense. Right. But and when someone starts their fitness journey, a lot of people, you know, they are maybe in the red or the orange where they're just, they're not really incorporating very many healthy foods into their diet. But what we want to see and what we encourage is just moving that way on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. We don't expect to be all the way perfect on the other side right away. We don't even want that. We want you to like learn, okay, how do we start incorporating these really healthy foods? How do we move along the spectrum so then that way you can have this as a long, sustainable lifestyle. Yeah. And the one thing I'll say real quick too is that for the people that are trying to be perfect, you end up having to sacrifice a lot of other things in life. Like maybe coming out and having a nice night out because it's like, oh, I don't want to go off my plan so I can't go out with friends. I can't, you know, do this or that. It almost becomes a problem when you are too perfect with the nutrition. So we'd rather see people actually, you know, enjoy yourself every once in a while. You're going to be able to sustain that much, much longer um, you know, over the course of a year or two years plus rather than just a month or a couple months out of the year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so our first little habit, which if you want to flip over your note sheet, you can put any little jot down any notes on this. The toothbrush rule is our first healthy habit. And this one's kind of fun because you would think, okay, a toothbrush, what does that have to do with my nutrition? Um, what I am going to have everybody pop quiz, I'm going to out myself too. Has there been a time in the past year where you've, maybe it was a late night, you didn't brush your teeth before you went to bed? I've done that before, it was late, didn't brush my teeth in the last year. Anybody else forget to brush their teeth? All right, there's some, some people are really care about their dental. All right, cool. Um, what we want to think about is what did you do the next day? Like, pop quiz, McKenna? I brushed them the next morning. You brushed them the next morning, right. But did you beat yourself up about it? Did you call your dentist and say, hey, I need to get an emergency cleaning because I went, I, I just didn't brush my teeth and I don't know what to do now. Did you say, screw it, you know what? I didn't brush my teeth tonight. I'm not gonna brush it all weekend. I'm gonna eat all the gummy candies this weekend and I'm gonna start fresh on Monday, right? Doesn't it sound kind of weird when you think about it in terms of brushing your teeth? It's just, no, it's just something that you Maybe you fall off track a little bit, you get right back on it the next day. Mm -hmm. There's no guilt and there's no shame around it. Our nutrition should be really similar. Kind of like what you mentioned. Okay, if you do have some drinks one night or you have dessert, it's like, all right, cool. This next, the next day, instead of beating yourself up about it, just get right back to your healthy habits. Yep. The whole thing is keeping a curious, kind and honest mindset with yourself. So being curious about your habits, why you're doing certain things. Maybe you opened up a bag of chips at night and you were like, oh, I'm just going to have a few, right? Next thing you know, you're binge watching Game of Thrones and the whole bag's gone. And you're like, ooh, okay, that's not right. Instead of beating yourself up about it, like, why don't I have better self-discipline? Why don't I have better willpower? Why can't I stop eating the, this whole sleeve of Oreos? Why can't I just have a couple? Being curious about that and try to be a detective and be like, hmm, okay, what can I do differently next time to avoid this situation? Or like, how can I maybe do better next time instead of beating yourself up? And then being kind to yourself and being just brutally honest. Like, if you know something about yourself, like, you know, if you're going to take that bag of chips with you, you know you're going to eat it all. Like, if I took a whole tub of ice cream and sat on the couch, I would eat the whole thing. <clears throat> And it's, there's no amount of willpower that could probably stop me. Like I would probably still eat past fullness. So being honest with yourself, taking accountability 
and then just keeping that curious mindset around your food habits. Yeah. And then this next habit, adopting the healthy plate. So maybe, maybe people remember the my plate that's gone through schools, but this one's a little bit different. This one's super easy. You can do vegetables of at least two kinds on half your plate. Everybody usually eats off a plate or they can at least eyeball it. For vegetables, if you do half your plate veggies, it only leaves so much room for the other foods. So say you're at a buffet or a family gathering, if you automatically, oh, let me just put these vegetables on my plate, make it half of it, you only have so much room for the other fun foods when you go through the rest of the line. So it's a quick example of how to use that in everyday life and then filling it up with a quarter of protein, starch, all that good stuff. And unfortunately, starchy veggies like potatoes and butternut squash, corn even, can get a bad rap. But carbohydrates are our body's best fuel source. And so it powers our brain function. Our brain is actually what takes up 25% of our daily calories. So what we want to do is check our fuel source, right? We have the carbohydrates that most people think about is your white bread, your sugar, your highly processed foods, and that's going to be your like low grade, the low quality fuel. So it's like, yes, it'll make your car go, but it's going to kind of clog up the gasoline and it's going to kind of clog up your car. You're not going to perform as best as you can with that low quality fuel. And then there's mid grade, which it's, you know, still a decent option, but it's not the best performing option yet. And then you get into the premium. That's going to be your whole unprocessed foods. So you want to make sure that you can get as much of your carbohydrates from those potatoes, whole grain starches, even apples, some like fruits and vegetables that are a little bit higher carb and more whole foods that come from nature. And then supplement your diet a little bit with the whole wheat pasta, whole wheat bread, since that's a little bit more processed. Yeah, so next, um, the beautiful thing about kind of measuring out your food is we've got our hands available with us all the time. So if you are somewhere where you're making a meal, you can literally just use your hands to portion everything out. So if you've got your two hands for your vegetables or half your plate, um, you've got a fist for your starches, your grains, your carbohydrates, you've got uh, about the size of your palm for your protein. So when you think of your, you know, your steak, your chicken, your shrimp, like what we're ordering tonight, you can just use the size of your palm. That's about the portion that you need. Um, and then we've got your thumb for your healthy fats. So kind of no matter where you're at or if you're making a meal at home, you can easily eyeball and know about how much of everything you need to put you in a really good position with your macronutrients and in your nutrition. So that can avoid overeating or under eating as well. Yeah. So. The other cool thing with the hand portion method is if you take my hand and if you take Taylor's hand, his hand's going to be a lot bigger than mine. He's a guy, he's taller, he's got more mass, he's going to have larger hands. So it means he gets larger portions because he burns more calories mm -hmm. just through being a bigger person. So it's highly individual. Most people's hands are kind of based off their body. You know, if they're a little bit shorter, they tend to have smaller hands. If you're taller, you tend to have a little bit larger hands. So that's the cool thing is it is individualized based on your body. The next part is getting extra colors in your diet. So the fun thing with getting really colorful with your fruits, your vegetables, is you're getting lots of vitamins and minerals. That's why there's so much color in all these foods is for it to actually attract us. That's why a lot of marketing games from food industry, food scientists, they like to put colorful packages on, you know, Cheez-Its, you know, think that's red, right? Same thing, red as an apple. They make it very vibrant. It draws our attention. That's why these nutrient dense foods are so important in our diet, making sure that we switch up those colors and then there's another handout that we have, which is a fruit challenge, veggie and fruit challenge, of eating the rainbow. So either every day, you can make it a goal to be every week, depending on where you start, to choose one food every day and just incorporate that into your diet. So from the red category, if you have like an apple with your breakfast, and then for orange, you could make 
you could do a double whammy. You could do orange, you could get the carrots, and then you can get some greens, and then you can make a huge colorful salad and get all the colors in there too. So instead of just thinking, oh, I should have really plain, bland looking food, because that's what quote healthy is, you can make it look really exciting with all the different colors. And even in the salads and the protein bowls that we're gonna be making today, there should be lots of different colors in there to help diversify and get all of those vitamins and micronutrients that we need. Um, another kind of fun little game that we gave you guys, and this is great for if you have kids or grandkids, um, to help the kids eat a little bit healthier too, is you can play a little bingo game with them. So you know, each day they can choose something from that game. And if they eat it, they can put a little sticker over it or mark it off. And after they get you know, five in a row diagonally across, you, know, you can give them, maybe celebrate with something that they really like. Maybe you take them out um, you know, and go to a park or something like that. You know, maybe don't celebrate with desserts because we don't want to teach them that kind of bad habit of like every time I do something good, I get rewarded with dessert. But maybe they go out and do something fun, go and play a game, something that they really enjoy. So you can kind of uh, have some fun with it with the kids as well. Yeah, and it's fun for adults too. Who doesn't yeah. like to play a little bingo? Right. And then the next biggest habit, honestly, in my opinion, yeah. is environment, environment design. And biggest quote, like the best environment wins when you autopilot those habits. Um, so the main thing is, is we want to start from the bottom and kind of work our way up. So as you can see, mindset and environment are kind of the biggest pieces of this iceberg of success. So the higher you go up on this, the more investment and effort you're going to put in. So if you're relying on willpower all the time with your foods, if you're surrounded by foods that are very highly tempting, it's going to be really, really hard to stay on track. So we want to actually focus more on the environment mostly to lead us to success. So. Yeah. And then another thing to break down your environment is your physical environment, your social environment, and the online environment. So for physical environment, that could be what does your pantry look like? What does your fridge look like when you open it? Are there fresh fruits and vegetables cut up ready to go and lots of proteins pre-made? Or do you have meals prepped that you can just grab and go? Or are there more tempting foods that are right away when you see it? So just kind of taking an audit of that and seeing, okay, is this environment setting me up for success and where I want to go? The social environment would be when you go out with friends, are they pressuring you to drink? Are they pressuring you to, oh, what, you can't have fun because you're on a diet? Like, uh, they kind of give you a hard time about it. And so kind of seeing, okay, are these people, if I am trying to improve my healthy habits, are they someone I want to spend more time with, less time with? Maybe you can have a social group that goes running or walking and make that your social gathering. Just having a supportive environment around you really helps, especially in the social game. One more thing on like the online presence yeah. is like, you know, we follow a lot of people, um, influencers and things like that. And there's a lot of people, you know, that scroll through TikTok and they see all these really delicious desserts and stuff like that. They get all these ideas from. Um, you know, you might have heard the analogy where you're the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. You could even go a step further and say that you're the sum of the five people you let influence you. So if you're constantly looking at online things, that's going to influence you one direction or the other. So one way to improve your environment is to start following more people that are living a lifestyle that you want to live, eating the way that you want to eat and working out, things like that. Hopefully that's kind of what we're doing with our online yeah. presence, with this, you know, presentation, with the the um, content that we put out, we want to try to be that influencer to you guys to make healthier decisions too. Right. And then that kind of goes full circle with the community of like working with the mint and making the healthy power bowls, trying to improve that, that social aspect so people can still go out yeah. and enjoy a meal with their friends. Um, something that we really love and it's very eye opening. Uh, this is a paragraph from the book Atomic Habits. So what's very interesting is it says when scientists analyze people who appear to have tremendous self-control, it turns out that those individuals aren't all that different from those who are actually struggling. So instead, disciplined people are better at structuring their lives in a way that doesn't require heroic willpower or self-control. So in other words, they spend less time in tempting situations. So I am no more disciplined with desserts as any of you. I just don't have that in my environment all the time. 
So, you know, if you put ice cream in front of me, like what Bethany said, I'm going to eat, you know, the most ice cream. And, and Katie knows this firsthand. Like, I love my blizzards, but I'm not going to have ice cream in the freezer at all times, you know, a couple different flavors. We go out maybe once or twice a month to get one. So it's just setting up your environment for success. Right. It's making the healthy choice the easy choice. That's a really cool mantra that I use in my head, you know, making those healthier choices easier and making the unhealthy choice harder. Yeah. So making it easy to make those right decisions that support your goals is, you know, it could be having those foods prepped and ready to go and just keeping those foods in your house and keeping the other tempting foods out of your house so that it, there's a little bit of a barrier. You know, he has to drive to Dairy Queen and go around construction and pay money to go and get a blizzard. <laughs> and it's like, oh, do I really want to go through the hassle when you're curled up at home versus if he just had it in his uh, refrigerator at home, he could just walk to the cupboard, get out a bowl, scoop it out and go sit back down. It's a lot easier to get that habit versus driving all the way there. There's a little bit of a barrier. So setting those barriers in between those bad habits that maybe you want to stop or do less of, then that way you have a little bit of time to think, mm, maybe I really don't need the ice cream before right. you go and do and, it. And just pilot. kind of the bottom line is you don't need to like wish you were a more disciplined person. You just have to set up your environment. You need to be a little bit more disciplined with your environment. Yeah. Uh, another tip, so setting up your environment is having a weekly veggie bin. Um, this takes about five to 10 minutes to do. Everybody, when you go to the grocery store, you get your vegetables, you know, you might prep them right away, but I would probably guess most people, they just put it in the crisper drawer and I call it the drawer of death. My mom can vouch. I'll <laughs> buy veggies with good intentions when I lived at home and I'd put it in there and I'd forget about it. And guess what? They would go bad. I would never eat them. So using this tool by having a bin or some sort of fresh keeper, you can chop up and prep your vegetables so they're ready to either chop up and throw in a salad or put in a recipe or even just eat raw right from the veggie bin. So then that way it's really easy to access, really easy to get your vegetables in instead of, oh, I have to wash the vegetable and I have to cut it and it's all the way in the bottom of the crisper drawer where I don't see it. Here you can put it right on the top of your fridge where you see it every time you open right away. Yep. And then here's just some other examples of it. You can yeah. get it out right after you bring your groceries home, you can stack that habit. So another thing from Atomic Habits is stack habit stacking, where you pair a new habit with one that you already have. So when you bring your groceries home, you're gonna put it all away right away, right? So you can stack that, just keep your vegetables out, chop them up, put them in your veggie bin, takes an extra five, 10 minutes on top of putting groceries away. So it's an easy way to set yourself up for success with that. So another thing um, is like kind of making, doing the same thing with your snacks. So one way to be more prepared or set up your environment better is to like plan out some snacks. So as you can see on here, um, once you do do your grocery shopping, try to divvy out your snacks into portion sizes and kind of set it up for the whole entire week. So we're going to get into kind of uh, a way that you can um, make sure that you're mixing things up, not getting kind of bored with your snacks, but always being prepared with it. So something I like to do is always have snacks. Um, I have it in my backpack that I carry with me everywhere. I have them at work and at home. So we've always got kind of a variety of different snacks. So some of my favorites are just fruits such as bananas, RX bars. It could be a protein shake ready to drink. It doesn't have to be anything, you know, super difficult. I try to make it super simple, quick and easy to grab. Um, so that's what this is kind of illustrating is just kind of after you do your grocery shopping, set up your snacks. So that way in between meals, you've got different healthy options that you can turn to instead of running through the drive through or grabbing something that you see, you know, a bag of chips or something like that. Yeah. And you can even get individual sized packages. So like the hundred calorie little serving sizes of nuts that you can buy right from the store. Instead of, you know, if you sit down with a bag of almonds, roasted, salted almonds, it's still easy to eat 500 calories worth of almonds without even thinking about it. So kind of already having that portion, you're controlling your portions without having to think about it because you have your little serving and you're happy with it. The next big focus is whole foods. So our bodies, actually get vitamins and minerals better from whole foods versus from a vitamin. We're able to absorb it better. 
don't really know why it does. It just does. Our bodies like those whole natural foods. We've been eating whole natural foods for thousands of years. So I think our bodies are just more evolved to extract nutrients from that. By minimizing those highly processed foods, the empty calorie foods, the beverages in your diet, making it more of an 80-20. So 80% of those whole natural foods that can spoil, you know, they come straight from the earth. You know, think of your just whole potatoes, what's around the perimeter of the grocery store. And by making still 20%, you have that flexibility. A big thing with this is hunger. So one thing that people say when they're dieting is they get really hungry and that makes them crave different foods or want to snack on things. But by having more of these whole foods, you're filled up, you have more volume of food for less calories. So, you know, if you eat a Big Mac, you can eat that in a couple of minutes, right? And it's this much food, but it's five, 600 calories. But if you try to eat five, 600 calories of apples, <laughs> it's going to take you more time. It's going to be a lot harder to chew. You probably won't end up eating 500 calories of apples, but you'll still feel really full from it and you'll get a lot more nutrients from it as well. Yeah, so basically what we want to do is just try to think positive, um, make your actions become habits. So what you do every single day, repeat it over time, typically it only takes about 60 days. So if you want to try to adopt one of these new habits, just try to practice it, be positive about it, do your absolute best, you know, try to make it easy and simple. Don't focus on too many things at once. Just maybe it's okay, maybe I'm gonna focus on my vegetables for the next month or the next two months. Once you get about you know, two months in, it's gonna become habit, and then you can move on to the next habit. So you basically just wanna make it easy and turn those actions into habits. Right, and then breaking it down into little actionable steps that you can take really easily. So mm -hmm. maybe it is just prepping your veggie bucket. Maybe you don't even focus on how many vegetables you're eating. Just focus on, okay, I'm gonna make that veggie bucket every time I bring home my groceries, and you'll probably increase the amount of vegetables you eat without even thinking about it. So then that way you can ditch the inner critic. So you start doing really good things and you're not beating yourself up over, oh, I tried to stick to keto and then I failed within seven days because I just couldn't stick to it. And instead of having that repeating cycle of like, man, it's really gonna be hard. I don't know if I can do this healthy living thing, making it easy and accessible and planning like, hey, it's uh, not gonna be one straight line from where I wanna go and where I am, like in that little first picture. It's like your plans, you want it to go smoothly, <laughs> but life happens, there's gonna be peaks and valleys. There's gonna be things that come up throughout your life. So you want these habits to be something that you can maintain even when it's not your best time to do it. So that's why we tell people, hey, the best time to start is today doesn't matter what type of season of life you're in, whether it's busy, whether it's slow. Honestly, it's even better if you do start when you're really busy or it's a hard season to incorporate these new habits because if you can do it when it's hard and when you're really busy, you can do it when it's easy and you have more time too. Another thing is, is try to focus on adding things in rather than cutting things out. So a lot of people have the goal of like, I need to cut back on sugar. I want to cut back on junk food. It's really hard to do that. Focus more on adding something simple in. So, if, you know, instead of cutting out pop, it's a lot simpler to add in an extra glass of water. So let me add in an extra glass of water every day and I'll do that until it becomes a habit. That's going to be a lot easier than saying, I'm going to cut out all my pop, you know, for the next month. You might set yourself up for failure. Um, whereas we want to try to make sure that you're succeeding and make this journey a little bit easier by adding simpler things in. Mm -hmm. And then the biggest tip is just pre-planning for success. So it ties into having that snack box ready, having that veggie bucket, you know, shopping with a grocery list or even doing the Walmart pickup, just pre-ordering all the foods that you need. So that way you're not going into the store and walking around and finding things that you don't necessarily need. Or if you go shopping hungry and then you start buying these things that Maybe it's not going to support your goal, but in that moment, you really, really want or think it's going to taste good. Um, Pre-washing the veggies and fruits, doing the snack bin, having a meal plan for the week. So in that way, you can do your grocery shopping, know what you need, know, okay, I'm going to need this, roughly this amount of these vegetables, plan them out, um, and then just bash cooking and freezing. I really like this, actually. Bash cooking a bunch of chicken and then freezing it already cooked. All I have to do is just pop it out of the freezer, 
when I'm ready or if I have a really busy weekend and I don't have time to cook or prep food, I have those healthy options available for use. Yep. Um, so something that we do just to make it easy is we do grocery pickup most of the time. Um, I also do icon meals. So it's a pre-made meal. I can actually pick out the portions for my protein, vegetables, and carbohydrates. So you can kind of customize it. I do that for lunch almost every day of the week. And then every time I make breakfast, I make double. So I'll, if I'm making eggs, for example, and maybe it's turkey sausage or turkey baking, something like that, I'm going to make double the amount, maybe triple. That way I've got multiple breakfasts ready to go. I don't have to make it every single day. So it's just making it easier. We don't want you to have to spend an hour and a half cooking meals every single day. It's how can we make you know, two hours on a Sunday or maybe a Wednesday to make, you know, three or four days of meals. So we want to try to make it easier, um, but also kind of like the environment. If you go into the shopping, you know, into the store and you don't have a list written down or shop the perimeter first, you're more likely to go through those aisles and pick out the things that maybe you don't need. Um, another thing that we do for like dinner is three days a week, we do HelloFresh. So other different variations to keep meals interesting. They're still really good, but they're a better option than maybe going and getting fast food every single week, right? So, mm -hmm. so this oh. is kind of my favorite thing is, this is a really cool thing called pick two, make 10. So pick two snacks, make 10 of them. So you've got your AM snack. For example, you could have an apple with some almonds. And so if you have five apples, you measure out maybe an eighth of a cup or a quarter of a cup of almonds. You get them in the snack bags. You've got five AM snacks. And then the bottom, we've got some vegetables and hummus. So you measure out some hummus, maybe it's an eighth cup or a quarter cup of hummus with some veggies. We're getting our colors in there. And you have those prepped for maybe a PM snack if you get hungry at night. So this is really cool just to kind of mix up your snacks, make sure you're staying full throughout the day. We'd rather see people kind of eat a smaller meal three times a day with a couple snacks in between, rather than maybe skipping breakfast, having a light lunch and then a massive dinner, and then you are still hungry after dinner and wanting snacks. So this will just help keep you satiated throughout the day. Plus we have different options. So you can see this is week one, week two, maybe you switch it up, do blueberries with yogurt, maybe a pear or a banana with a, a boiled egg. So you can obviously pick whatever snacks you enjoy the most. Um, and we can send you resources on like what healthy snacks to choose from. Um, there's obviously so many different variations that you could do. Try to pick stuff that you like. Don't make yourself eat something that you hate just because it's healthy, right? Yeah, exactly. And the key thing with these snacks is you're incorporating some sort of source of protein and then some sort of fiber. So it's all either like a fresh whole fruit or vegetable, pair that with you know, whether there's some nuts, which does have a little bit of protein in it and some healthy fats, or you can do the Greek yogurt, the hard boiled egg, even the protein shake would be fine on the go. Mm -hmm. um, this would also be a really good option for road trips. If you know you're going to be out of town, you know, almonds don't really go bad. You can just take the protein bars or jerky or something else. Super easy to take along with you, but having that pairing keeps you fuller longer and that doesn't give you that crash right afterwards. Whereas if you had something that was maybe just carbohydrates or just fats, you know, if you had like uh, a bagel or something like that, uh, you would get a little bit of a crash afterwards and you wouldn't feel super full until lunch. So you might get hungry earlier and want to eat or want a snack. Yeah. So having those kind of snacks spread throughout your meals as needed, then it kind of sets yourself up for success when you're not really hungry meal to meal. Yeah. And usually we try to push high protein snacks, when, especially for people that are working out regularly. Uh, protein is the most satiating macronutrient. So that it's going to keep you fuller longer. Whereas if you have a carbohydrate, you're probably still going to feel a little bit more hungry and that might lead to more mindless snacking. Mm -hmm. So just a quick summary of everything. We had our toothbrush rule, which we do have on the sheet on there. So toothbrush, just kind of forgive yourself if you do have a little oops. It's just, okay, get back right on the track after you maybe have a meal out or something that wasn't on plan, or maybe you miss a workout or something like that. Just get right back on track afterwards. Um, adopting the healthy plate. So using your hands for those portion sizes, which you guys are going to get to portion out your meals after this and kind of see what that looks like. And then just watching your overall portion size, doing it according to your body, your needs, 
for, you know, maybe you do work out a little more, so you might need a little extra carbohydrate, or maybe you don't work out as much or don't move as much. Maybe you don't need as much and kind of adjusting based on yourself and then coloring it up. Make sure you get all those different colors for those vitamins and minerals and whole foods, making sure you're setting up that environment for success. So having the healthy choice be the easy choice and then making the unhealthy choice a harder choice, putting a little bit of a boundary between that. I would even do an audit on your, when you go home, maybe not tonight, but tomorrow or Monday, do an audit of what you have in your house and kind of figure out, okay, you know, is 80% of the foods I have in here healthier or is it like 25% of the foods that I have in here healthy? Um, and maybe you have to do a little bit of rearranging of the foods, make the, the more of the junk food harder to reach out of sight. You know, if you've got potato chips and snacks right there on the kitchen counter, replace that with some apples and bananas and other stuff. You know, put the veggies right eye level in your, por your proteins. Um, right where you open the fridge, you can see it rather than maybe some of the unhealthier options. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely do an audit and kind of get, move down the spectrum and have a higher percentage of your foods being healthier. Yeah, and then moving on, just kind of taking that action for yourself of preparing, being prepared, having that vegetable bin, having the snack box ready to go. So in that way, when you're in a pinch, you have that to fall back on, focusing on those overall whole foods. So shopping the perimeter, and then making sure that, you know, 80% of the time you're getting those whole natural foods that, you know, if you just left them on the shelf, they would spoil, right? Or if, you know, after a few days, they would spoil and trying to make 80% of the foods you eat from that, but not going so extreme on one end of the spectrum and only eating those foods. You still want to incorporate other foods like, you know, things that you enjoy that you would still want to incorporate in your diet, but just in a very balanced way. Yeah. One other thing I do want to add on that is, you know, one of the common things that we hear is people want to eat healthy, but for one, it takes a little bit longer and for two, it's more expensive. But how I like to think about it is going back to like the gasoline analogy. You know, if you knew that if you go to the gas station and there was gas that was say $3 a gallon, but it was really poor for your car, you got less gas, gas mileage, it, your car was slower, but then you had the premium gas, maybe it is 50 cents more or a dollar more a gallon, but your car lasted longer, it ran better, had higher performance, um, you got better gas mileage so you can go further, you would probably choose the better gas most of the time. And that's what healthy foods, whole foods is gonna do for you. You're gonna feel way better, you're gonna have more energy, um, you're gonna be able to do so much more in your day, be more productive. So I would rather pay a little bit extra and take a little bit more time to prep my food to have that extra energy rather than feeling sluggish, um, brain fog from eating a cheaper source of food. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that analogy makes sense, but yeah. And then just being positive throughout the whole experience. And then also just being patient with yourself. If we expected as an analogy, a kid to be able to ride a bike the first time we put them on there. And, you know, we were super disappointed when they didn't get it the first time. We need to be a little bit more graceful with ourselves when we don't get those habits the first time, or if we do, oh, we hit, we made a mistake. It's like, oh, well, just get back up and try again, right? Treat it how you would somebody else. Sometimes that helps is just putting it in a different person's perspective instead of just thinking about it through your own lens. Because you can get really hard on yourself when you're trying to change your environment, when you're trying to change your habits and your health for the better, it can, you can get kind of down on yourself. And so if you keep that positive mindset of thinking, okay, what's the best choice I can make in this situation? There's another little saying, better is better, forward is forward. So any type of progress is still good progress, even if it's slow. Slow progress is still progress and you're still moving forward. So even if it's not as fast as you hoped, or maybe it's not as perfect as you were hoping it to be, it's still better than you were doing before. So give yourself credit for what you have done. Like focus on the positive things that you're able to do and adding in those good healthy habits. You know, maybe it's, okay, I did have half my plate vegetables at dinner, and okay, I had a drink or I had a small portion of dessert, but I ate less of the dessert than I usually would. Or if you go out for pizza, it's like, okay, I had two slices and a salad instead of eating half the pizza. So it's little pieces that add up over time. And then making sure to pre-plan for that success of having those things ready, supporting your environment and designing yourself a plan, whether it's the meal prepping or it is getting a meal delivery service or even getting 
your spouse in on it. That's another part of it, getting your social environment set up to plan for that success for yourself. And it all does start with a goal. So you do have a little take action item. There's a little red square that you can find on your sheet. So set a goal for yourself, one that's you know attainable for you. Maybe it's something just little. Maybe it is making that veggie bucket this next week. Set that goal for yourself. Or, okay, this next month, I'm going to focus on making a grocery list or making a meal plan for myself and incorporating that 80-20 rule. Yep. So take a few minutes and write that down for yourself. I might touch on why too. Mm -hmm. Does everybody have a goal written down? Probably. Does anybody want to share their goal? Go Tuesday and Thursday. There you go. Tuesday, Thursday classes added it in. There you go. Cool. The other big thing to think about is you have to kind of know why you're doing this. So you might have aspirations to be healthier. Maybe it's start exercising, eat healthier, stuff like that. You have to attach a why to it. So you got to kind of dig deep and figure out, okay, why am I doing this? Why do I want to be a healthier person? Um, obviously, it might be for personal reasons, like I want to feel better, I want to look better, things like that. But for a lot of us, it's like I want to be a better example for my kids or grandkids. I want to be able to play with my kids. Like Caitlin's why, you know, is all about Wyatt now. So like, she wants to be the best mom she can be, for example. So, you know, she talks about that a lot when we do our trainer talk. So try to think of reasons as to why you want to be healthier. And that's going to help you succeed um, much more than just kind of saying, you know, I want to maybe lose some weight or something like that. Try to dig a little deeper and figure out really why you want to be healthier. Yeah. And the exercise that we do with clients for that to figure out what's your deepest underlying why is just asking why five times. So it's like, okay, why do you want to eat healthy? Or why do you want to lose weight? Okay, I want to feel a little bit better. Okay, why do you want to feel better? Uh, okay, maybe I'd be a little bit better mood or I'd feel a little bit better about myself. Okay, why do you want to feel better about yourself? And keep digging deeper until you've asked yourself why five times. And you really have to like look internally and say, oh, okay, this is why I want to do it. It's not just the surface level things of I want to feel better, look better. It's just all the deeper meanings of why is this important to you and why should you stick to these goals? Because it's going to get hard sometimes to incorporate these healthy habits. And behavior change is hard. So if you have a really strong why, it can withstand almost any how. It's one of my favorite quotes. Yep. So again, just to kind of cap it off, like success is a sum of really small efforts repeated day in and day out. So, you know, you don't have to do a lot of these things. You know, don't try to go home and make a veggie bucket, clean out your environment, you know, clean out your social environment, your online presence. Don't try to do all these things at once. Pick one or two things, do it, you know, 80% of the time consistently. And after that becomes a habit, then you can add in the next thing. You know, think of it more like zoom out over the next couple of years, not just over the next 30 days. Mm -hmm. So just put in a little bit of effort every single day that's going to move you forward and you will be successful. Yep. And then just kind of go over what we do. Um, we do the one-on-one -on -one nutrition counseling. And if you wanted to learn more about that, just send us an email that we have a copy of it and printed on all on of there? our sheets. Okay. Yeah, it's printed on all of our sheets. Yeah. If you want to learn more, just type in either nutrition or seminar in the subject. And we'll know since it's from this day that that's what we need to get in contact with you for. Yep. We also have an online community. So if you need a helpful social environment, we do have a Facebook group. It's called Thumb Strong Healthy Living Community. So if you just join, we do weekly posts on that about nutrition, about fitness, the mindset every week. So then that way you do have some positive things coming into your feed about how to live a happier, healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, and we are running right now. So we're getting ready to do an internal kind of program for nutrition. And then we always do a six week challenge for new clients as well. So if you're a new client to the gym, if you're interested in learning about that, 
just shoot us an email um, saying, you know, a six week challenge or nutrition coaching. We can always give you details on that. If you're a current client, she's going to be running a really cool nine week nutrition mentorship um, where she's going to be meeting with you guys every single week going over different nutritional habits. Um, so if you're interested in that, you could always send us an email on that too. And then if you wanted to know more about like what your starting point is, so we have an in-body scanner. Um, what this does is it measures your body weight, but there's more important metrics than just body weight too. There's body fat percentage, your muscle mass, water. It takes all those things into account so you get a full scope of what your body is really made of. And then you can see your really cool results over time. Instead of just weight on the scale, you can see, okay, was I losing body fat? Did I gain muscle? All these other important health factors because muscle is important too. Yeah. You can also see how many calories you burn every day without doing anything. So that's called your basal metabolic rate. So we can actually see, okay, how many calories do you need to have in a day just to function properly? And a lot of people when they're doing restrictive diets or these challenges, like the 30 day quick fixes, they're undernourishing and that's why you feel really tired and sluggish and you're craving these different foods. That's a lot of times why we end up feeling is we're eating below our basal metabolic rate. Basically, if you woke up and didn't do anything all day long, there's a certain amount of calories your body needs to function properly. And we can actually tell you um, right on here, your basal metabolic rate. So just to give you an example, um, I'm about 195 pounds. When I do this test, because I have a little higher average muscle mass than the average person my age, my body requires like 2,100 calories just to function properly. So I have to eat at least that much in order to feel my best and just have the energy that I need to get the things done that I need to do. Yeah. And then kind of speaking on like the scale part of it, the cool thing with this is you see, okay, what's my deeper look at health? So for me, for example, looking at me, most people guess they're like, oh, she weighs like 145. I'll get 135 sometimes. So I'll ask clients, be like, how much do you think I weigh? I'm five, seven and a half ish, right? I actually weigh like 160, 163, depending on what the scale says on the day and the water fluctuations. But what's cool is it breaks down. I have such a high lean muscle mass. I have 130 pounds of lean body mass. So that's, if you took the fat from the body, that's what you'd be left with, which you do need essential fats too. But it just shows that, okay, maybe you do have a higher muscle mass and a higher lean body mass. So you do need to eat more calories to support that. And then trying to maintain that as you lose body fat is really important too. So that way you maintain strength, you maintain the muscle as you go about your diet and living this healthier lifestyle. Questions? Do we have any questions? Must have done pretty good. Comments, then. concerns. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you for coming out. Now Thanks. it's time to eat, I think. Time to eat.